In this video, I want to implement a simple digging mechanic so that we can dig in our ground and simply by clicking on the block, we are going to shoot a raycast. And if there is a block, we are going to remove it and we are going to update our chunk that we are currently modifying. Okay, we are in our project and inside our scripts, we had created this player folder and inside our player or character script, I believe, we had this one method handle mouse click unimplemented and this method will handle our digging mechanic so let's open up the character script okay and when we were implementing our uh, mechanic for loading more chunks into our terrain we have also added those ground mask and the interaction ray length at the top uh, in our fields section and basically those are the parameters that we are going to be using to check if we are able to dig in this uh space or not if there is a, indeed a block there or not another thing that we have added was this handle mouse click to our on mouse click event and this method was created automatically this is a private void handle mouse click and currently it is empty okay so let me paste the code here so when we call handle mouse click method we are going to simply create a ray player ray equals new ray and we are going to use main camera reference that we have at the top as a field. Uh, this was the, another field that we have assigned but not used yet. So this is the reference to our main camera. And we are going to uh, create a ray from the main camera transform position. Since our camera is, uh, our player is looking from the first person perspective, uh, we can shoot basically at what we are aiming. So this is the starting point and the direction is main camera transform dot forward. So this will be the forward direction of our camera. So if you take a look at our game, you can see that when we spawn our player and select our main camera, our forward direction, so the blue arrow, is pointing in the direction where we are looking at. So this will point towards this block. And if we click on this, we are going to shoot a raycast using this uh, Z axis so that we can hit the block where, uh, that we are looking at. Okay, so our raycast hit hit will be assigned through an if physics.raycast. We are going to use the player ray as the raycast out hit, so the raycast hit, and we are going to pass the interaction ray length that we have set to be, I think, five at the top as the ray length. So beyond that length we are not going to detect any blocks so that we cannot interact with the blocks that are very far away and we are going to pass as the last parameter the ground mask which we need to set so that we can interact only with the meshes that are interactable so for example are assigned as a ground so we are going to have to create this layer mask as well and if everything goes right and we have hit a um, mesh uh, of type ground we are going to call modify terrain and this will take the raycast hit and we are we are going to call set block method but not on the voxel terrain which is a, a refactored version but we are going to call it world dot set block and uh, this means that we need to have a reference to our world in our character uh, so we are going to add uh, somewhere at the top here or uh, maybe at the bottom public world world so this will be the reference to our world that we have created using our procedural generation and we will need to have this set block method so now let's right click on this quick actions and generate this method inside our world okay we can right click on this and go to the definition so we may want to return a bool value here and let's call this uh, block type a block type Okay, so what we want to do first is we want to check if indeed what we have hit contains a chunk render. So if we know that we have our chunk render, then we want to get the position of our block. So we are going to have vector3 int position equals get block position from our hit. So let's right click on this method and generate it inside our world class. Now, as you can see, we're adding a lot of classes to our world, so this would be a good idea to refactor it to a separate class. But for now, let's implement this mechanic of digging. So we need to get the block position. Now, if you shoot a raycast from our camera, we are be, we will be hitting our 
faces of our blocks at either at the top or to the side or whatever face we are currently seeing we are going to get the parameters the position of our face if we go to our block helper script when we are creating a get face vertices we are passing x y and z coordinate of a block but we are creating the vertex 0.5 from our center of the block so if we draw our cube our center of the cube is in the center of the cube obviously and the faces are point half from the center so if we hit our position uh, of our top of our uh, top face we need to subtract this 0 0.5 and how do we get it so basically we can get the normal vector of our face and this will point out uh, upward 0, 1, 0. So to calculate the position in the center, we need to subtract from y minus 0. 0.5. So if we divide this by half, we are going to get 0, 0. 0.5 and 0. If we subtract from our position that we have calculated here, 0 0.5 on y axis we are going to get the position of the center of the cube so basically we are going to use the normal vector and the hit dot position so, so the position where our ray cast has hit the face to get the center of the block okay i believe that this concept is much harder to explain than to write the code for it so basically what we are going to do in our get position method is we are going to create a vector 3 position equals new vector 3 and we are going to call a get block position in method to which we are going to pass the hit dot point dot x so this is the position where we have raycast uh, our raycast has hit the face and the hit dot normal dot x which is the normal vector uh, so basically one of those will be 0.5 so we need to find for this point the correct uh, equation uh, to find our center of the cube so let's right click on this method quick actions and generate and at the end we are going to return not this because uh, there is no point in writing a new method for one line of code we are going to return vector 3 int dot round to int and we are going to round to int the position that we have received so in this new method let's call this first float pause and the second flo flo normal, float normal okay and right now what we will want to do is check if the math f dot absolute value of the remainder of the position so we are going to find the remainder of the position divided by one so this will return us the, the decimal part of our value so if this is equal to 0 0.5 and it should be since we have placed our faces in this fashion uh, we should subtract from our position minus equals normal divided by 2 and the normal is the normal of the specific coordinate so if this is 1 this will be 0 0.5 if this is minus 1 this will be minus 0 0.5 so we in this fashion if we are checking the i think downwards for example face we are going to get minus 0 0.5 because the, the normal will go down so we are going to basically add to this position 0 0.5 and thus we are going to find the specific position of the center of the cube of the block which we want to remove okay so we have received this position so all we need to do is call our world data helper set block we will need to have the same method there it will take chunk dot chunk data dot world reference uh, since this method will not exist in our world but our, in a separate class this is why we have this otherwise we could just pass this world but we can access it through our chunk render we're going to pass the position and the block type so let's right click on this method uh, quick actions and generate it and at the end we are going to call chunk dot modified by the player true so this will mean that we are not going to remove our chunk data from the dictionary as well as this will help us when we want to create a save system for example so we know which chunks we need to save and which we can generate so all the others we can basically generate using our procedural algorithm okay so let's select our set block and go to the definition okay and let me paste here the code that we will need to have so we need to access our chunk data we will need to have this get chunk data method 
Now, of course, we could have passed the chunk data from our chunk as well, but we are going to have to implement this method for other uh, operations that we are going to perform. So we need to have this method as well. So right click on this and we are going to pass here the world reference and the position that we want to access. Right click on it, uh, go to and uh, quick actions and generate this method. And if this chunk data is not null, we're going to create local position equals chunk dot get block in chunk coordinates. And we're going to pass the chunk data and position. So we have access the local position of our block and we are going to call chunk set block chunk data local position and block type. This is what we are using in our uh, layers for the generation of our block data. So this will set the data for our block. So let's type down to find our get chunk data method. And here again, I will paste the code. We want to access vector three int chunk position equals chunk position from block coordinates. And we're going to access our chunk position uh, by passing the world reference and the position of our uh, block. So this method we have already existing, go to the definition in our world data helper. It allows us to access the uh, position of our chunk from the position that we passed to it from the block coordinates. Okay. And next we're going to get the chunk data container chunk equals null we are going to call world reference dot world data chunk data dictionary try get value chunk position and we're going to set out container chunk and we are going to return this chunk data if we have it otherwise it will be null okay so now we have our uh, in our world we have received our chunk data so last thing that we will need to do is call our chunk dot update chunk and we have this empty method so the, it doesn't take any parameters and it uses the chunk data that we already have saved inside our chunk render to update our chunk and since we have modified it inside our set block method we can update it let's return true now before we can do anything else let's select file and save all and last thing that we will need is to go to our character and inside our character, we have we need to access this world a, a reference value. So in the awake, let's add our world equals find object of type. We are going to type world, and now we this way we are going to get the world reference. Let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. Now before we press play, make sure that you have this ground layer in your layers. I think we did it in the previous video. But make sure that you have in your assets your chunk set to be on the layer ground. And next, so go to our underscore Kenny assets inside our player that our character has the ground mask selected to be uh, the ground. So now if you press play and regenerate our world, okay, I have skipped the time to wait. We can now click on a block and you can see that we are removing those. Now, this is not a uh, complete logic behind this because uh, let me say, uh, check the edge chunks. When we remove our chunks, as you can see here, we have not spawned the, uh, the face because we are removing the block on the edge between one chunk and the other. So in addition to what we are currently doing, so we are updating this current chunk, we need to also take care of updating the chunks in case our block was on the edge and the neighbor chunk needs to update its own faces so it is all rendered correctly. As well as we are going to find out how to make sure that we can dig deeper because right now we have no chunk below us. So in case we dig too deep, we are going to uh, have no chunk to dig in. Okay, see you in the next video.